For some people, talking about sex, contraception and pregnancy can be uncomfortable and in many cultures even taboo. The Internet has long been a place where people can ask questions anonymously and nowadays there are more and more apps and AI chatbots specifically geared towards tackling these sensitive matters. But can we trust the information and what happens to our data? AI-powered apps can be great educational tools, but oftentimes the content is offered exclusively in English and doesn't cater to other languages or dialects. So it's often the people who need resources most who are excluded from them, including people in more rural regions. Mena Bolo is an app designed to understand some of India's numerous languages and dialects. It's aimed specifically at women who lack reliable information on topics like menstruation, infertility or family planning. The makers of the app want to dispel myths and empower women. But how well does the AI understand its users and are users getting the answers they need? When Kalyani Kadam first got her period, she didn't know anything about it. She had a lot of misconceptions. My grandmother used to say, if a snake tastes the period blood from discarded sanitary pads, then you'll never get your period again and you'll never be able to have children. She found out only recently that that wasn't true, after asking an AI chatbot, because that time had come for her daughter too. When my daughter first got her period, I repeated what I had been told, that you'll have problems if any animal tastes your period blood. But then I asked the Menabola app about it and it cleared up the misconception. I explained to my daughter that it was actually a superstition. As a super user of the ChatGPT power chatbot, she can also ask questions on behalf of other women. Now, whenever I have a question about periods, pregnancy or even mental health, we put it to the chatbot and get an answer. Whatever the women ask me, I put it in the chatbot and it replies. In India, AI chatbots like Menabolo, Sne AI or Just Ask offer users medically accurate answers in a confidential and non-judgmental manner. The information in the Menabolo app comes from doctors who tailor it to regional needs. We have created a medical database uh, and we have restricted it to the Indian context. For example, a user has asked that, um, uh, oh, I've had relations and, you know, I don't want to conceive at the moment. What should I do? The obvious answer is that you can have ECP, emergency contraceptive pill. So the answer that could come uh, from here is, ki, uh, oh, you could take an ECP anywhere between five days of having relations, okay? But in Indian context, that would not work. The ECPs that are available here usually are working only for 72 hours. So language isn't the only factor developers have to take into account. Regional differences should be considered too. But in order to receive tailored answers, users have to disclose very personal information. How is this data protected? We asked one of the people behind Menabolo. We have various guidelines and guardrails in place. Um, so one of those being the GDPR guidelines. In addition, we are planning various uh, methods in order to uh, ensure that there is no data risk. So this would include a woman being able to delete her chat history, delete her data on her phone. Um, finally, we also ensure that our data is um, you know, coded by unique ID rather than by names. So this also helps to make sure that any um, you know, hierarchy patterns and trends we need to analyze, they're all contextualized within a unique ID, not really identifying the name or age or location of any of the women that are using the application. That sounds like a well thought out strategy. But while it may seem obvious that intimate information needs to be protected, you can't take for granted that it will be. A study published in 2024 assessed the data security practices of various female health apps and it revealed a bleak reality for users. Many women use period tracker apps as a tool to avoid getting pregnant or when trying to conceive. But the apps reviewed for the studies had hardly any security precautions. Many were found lacking when it came to safe storage and the deletion of sensitive data. Some even required superfluous information, for example, camera access to scan pregnancy tests. Other apps passed on data directly to third parties. This is highly problematic, especially in countries where abortions are illegal. If data ends up in the wrong hands, authorities could potentially persecute users. But more on that later. 
Data security is also crucial for the LGBTQ plus community, where people can face hostility and persecution. For many, online platforms can be a safe space. Grindr, for example, is the world's largest dating app for LGBTQ plus people. In South Africa, the app is testing out strategies to educate people about STIs. Johannesburg is a booming city that's recently been battling a spike in STIs and other illnesses. The risk of contracting HIV and Mpox is high here, especially for men who have sex with men, shorthand MSM. Trans people too face a higher risk, especially for HIV. Users of the dating platform Grinder are shown information about Mpox directly in the app. Researchers from Accenture, a local medical center, have teamed up with Grindr to increase awareness of the dangers of STIs among the app's users. We received communication that the first cases of Mpox, you know, had been reported and it seemed that it was spreading mostly in the MSM community um, and they were at higher risk of getting Mpox. We decided to use our partnership with Grindr to create awareness around Mpox. So we have since uh, submitted some information around symptoms associated with Mpox and what to report and how it spread. We have shared this with Grindr for them to post um, on their platform for their users. Grindr users are also shown information on the HIV prevention medication known as PrEP. The Essential Research Center has partnered up with an online store so that users are just a click away from ordering PrEP or HIV tests. Before any medication is delivered, a blood test and an online medical consultation are required. But what about data protection? Grindr does collect information about its users via cookies, for example, just like other apps and websites. But the company says it does not collect data on whether users respond to the medical offers. We are not collecting any data in regards to the pop-up messages. These are just a way that we are connecting users to the resources and services that are shared locally. So, for example, if a user orders PrEP through the Exchange Center, we would not know which user orders it, where their home is, or where that location is. That is only sh uh, that's only shared within the Exchange Center and their platform. Users on dating apps divulge a lot of private information, but should medical data really be part of that? Then again, discreetly finding out about prevention options online can be hugely beneficial to many people. We have long waiting times, uh, discrimination and stigma in a lot of our um, health facilities for LGBT plus people. So, Accessing it on a platform like social media or Grindr makes it a lot accessible and also safe for LGBT plus people that they don't worry about having that face-to-face -face interaction. The fact is, using dating apps means disclosing personal information. And despite all assurances, Grindr has been in court several times for data protection violations. In Norway, the company was ordered to pay a fine of almost 6 million euros. And although there can be advantages to sharing medical information online, I for one am cautious. Still in some cases, online platforms are something of a last resort. For example, in the wake of stricter abortion laws in the US. Abortions are now banned in a number of states. Many women have no choice but to turn to the internet. There, reproductive rights organizations offer valuable support, like how to get the morning after pill by post or directions to the nearest clinics in states where abortion is still legal not to mention advice and counseling. Measures like these can save lives. A US study found a link between restrictive abortion laws and higher suicide rates among women of childbearing age. In Ethiopia, abortions have been permitted under certain circumstances since 2005. The change significantly reduced maternal mortality. Because abortions performed illegally by untrained people are very dangerous. That said, certain issues are still considered taboo. Entrepreneur Kidis Tesfaye was born in Ethiopia. She's all too familiar with the taboos that pervade her country. After graduating from Harvard University in the US, she returned to Ethiopia. Her vision to advance women's health care with her startup. When I first came to Ethiopia, I ordered, I went to the pharmacy to buy pads, sanitary pads, and I ordered, and the, <clears throat> the pharmacist went to the back, brought it, he wrapped it in a newspaper and then gave it to me and I was like, wait, I just ordered pads. 
The mission of a company, Jena Health, is to help girls and women gain a better understanding of their bodies and health. Jena means my in Amharic, so my health. Many girls in Ethiopia don't know much about menstruation until they experience it themselves. The stigma prevents many women from talking about it openly. A lot of the times patients are just scared to talk about it or ask questions and they end up in circumstances that have to get them hospitalized. Fewer than a third of the 60 million women in Ethiopia have sufficient access to menstrual products. Some have to use unsanitary materials, such as rags, or newspapers instead. Kiris Tesfaye wants to harness the potential of technology to make women's healthcare affordable and accessible. We're trying to you know, pioneer that new era of digital health where people are using their mobile phones to uh, you know, make purchases or talk to doctors or um, get their prescriptions. The free app works on smartphones and computers. Women can consult doctors online. What can I help you with? I'm not feeling well. I, I have period cramps and they're really painful. Um, could you just help me uh, um, decide or like what, which medications to take? Okay, so is your main stress like you usually... The cost of an online consultation like this is lower than one in person. Gene Health helps women live better lives, healthier lives. Um, I think it empowers women to um, not be ashamed. I think it strips away the stigma of, of a lot of um, female-related health, health, not issues, but matters that are a taboo in the society. Gela Nedisasa also uses Gene Health to have menstrual products and supplements delivered directly to her home. AI apps and online services often work better when they are developed where they will actually be used and ideally by people who will use them themselves. In this case, developed by women for women. Still, data protection and general accessibility are two areas in need of improvement. But in principle, digital technology really can help to break down taboos and prejudices. That's it from me. Bye-bye.